r slash ask reddit are you proud of your own nationality why or why not i'm proud to be russian but i'm not proud of my country i am proud of our language i am proud of our literature and i am proud of our unique culture i am proud to be a part of this incredible nation i like being who i am but i am not proud what has happened and is happening in russia and with our people there's nothing to be proud of and i really hope that my country will become better over time i have a similar feeling about poland iran checking in i am greek i couldn't be more proud of its history and i couldn't be any more disappointed with how it is now there is so much potential in greece that is just wasted and it's sad to see how far we've fallen literally every greek person believes this we are so underdeveloped r and we could do so much you would be surprised how many people are like how we are the greatest because of history democracy blah 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 and don't give a shit to fix it educational system is the worst if you ask me german culturally not allowed to be proud it's okay though don't care about where people including myself come from i feel similar but actually, and that's probably because I am German. I don't understand the concept of patriotism. As for example, Americans live it. I love Germany. I'm happy I was born in Germany. I'm happy to live in Germany. I'm happy to have a German passport. Our social system is one of the greatest. We live good lives over here. I really love Germany. Proud pride is something I feel after having achieved something. Not something I feel when thinking about where I was born. I was just lucky. I concur. I can only be proud of my own achievements or maybe for achievements of people I believe to have influenced. But I really cannot see why I would be proud to be randomly born into this country. Since this is not an achievement of my own. Britain likes tea. I don't like tea. I am British. I like tea now. And crumpets. Ducking hell I live on that stuff. Sorta. I like to beach a lot about my country and rightfully so. However when we look at the stats we are doing really well for such a small country. Among countrymen we all complain. But as soon as we talk sports or have a party we suddenly become very nationalistic. The Netherlands. I only become very nationalistic during the Eurovision Song Contest. LOL. I love that movie Will Daryl did and I never knew Eurovision was a legit thing until then. I think it's pretty cool. I'm proud of the US's national park system. The country basically gives massive portions of land the size of small countries to the public. Which is incredible. My goal is to make it to everyone. Other countries do the same. Which is amazing and should be the standard all over the world. I found Leslie Nope. But seriously. You guys do have ask me anything in parks. I've only seen photos. Despite being neighbors. I hope in the months years to come when our borders are open again I can visit them. Yeah and it makes sense that a lot of Americans don't even have a passport. Want a desert? Nevada Arizona. Want beautiful mountains? Alaska. Want a ski? Colorado. I'm neither proud nor ashamed. I'm here through the accident of birth. It's home. It's decent. USA. I'm not really proud to be American. I haven't really contributed much. But I do feel lucky, America is not perfect and we have huge problems. But at least I know that my house won't be firebombed by a foreign country. Healthcare may make me go into debt. But at least I can't be turned away at a hospital if I can't pay for emergency surgery. We may have police brutality. But at least the government won't straight up assassinate us for publishing an anti-USA article. We may not have full equality yet. But at least women aren't arrested for wearing a tank top. None of these things excuse America's problems and we need to keep pushing for a socially just USA. But it could be worse. Yes very much. Kazakhstan greatest country in the world. All other countries are run by little girls. And your potassium? Kazakhstan number one exporter of potassium. All other countries have inferior potassium. I really love to be a Korean. So safe country. Nice people. Nice foods. Fast internet. Our letter Korean. And so on. We are small country but we are strong. I wish I could retire in Korea. But hubby doesn't want to learn Korean. Too bad. But I'll be back someday. Great food and such a fun place to drink. Though I'd probably turn into a raging alcoholic if I lived there. I am proud of being Irish. 
We have a great sense of community on the island and around the world. There are awful stereotypes and things I don't enjoy about it but for the most part it's a great place to come from. It's very easy to be proud as an Irish man. We have had some dark days we shouldn't be proud of but we also have an incredible culture, colorful history and rich characters. As a nation we cope and overcome together. We also celebrate together. Our influence has stretched the world over and for the size of us we have made ourselves known. And all that without a huge army or the buckets of money. Considering what the place looked like just over 100 years ago and what the famine did to the population. We all should be proud of the collective spirit of our nation. You guys got some epic landscapes too. I'm proud of being Norwegian. I strongly believe in my country's social democratic ideals. Our excellent welfare system. Universal health care. Paid maternity leave. For both parents. Free education and general care for our citizens. Still we have our problems and areas of improvement. But all in all it's good to be Norwegian. Ooh, we also have a really awesome king. A modern and progressive man. Here's an excerpt from a speech he made in 2016. Norwegians come from the north of the country, from the middle, from the south and all the other regions. Norwegians are also immigrants from Afghanistan, Pakistan, Poland, Sweden, Somalia and Syria. Norwegians are girls who love girls, boys who love boys, and boys and girls who love each other. Norwegians believe in God, Allah, everything and nothing. In other words, Norway is you, Norway is us. Norge, Red Heart. It's the most random thing to be born in a given country. Feeling proud of one's nationality is like feeling proud of one's race. I feel proud of my accomplishments, not of the tag that was given to me for my birthplace. It's a bit different. Nationality doesn't necessarily mean birthplace. You can change your nationality and like race. You can. But pride is something you feel for what you earn, not for your country. You can feel love for your country, but pride is for personal accomplishments. Proud of my nationality. One of the most beautiful places on earth. The people used to be extremely warm and kind and welcoming but now most are all about money. I'm going to be interesting telling the story of Atlantis when we are underwater. Maldives. Went to the Maldives on our honeymoon a long time ago. Easily the most beautiful place on earth that I have ever been to. People were so friendly too. I just feel so sad future generations won't be able to experience its beauty. Scottish. It's ducking class. Square sausage and iron brew. We win. I am. I was lucky to be born into one of the greatest countries on earth. And I'm proud of that country. I'm proud of what we do and what we stand for. I'm not gonna run around screaming about how we're better than everyone else. Lord knows we have enough nationalism. But I'm proud to be Canadian and that's that. I am proud to be Canadian but simultaneously recognize that we have some deep flaws. Our treatment of the indigenous peoples had been atrocious and we still have a very long way to go if we want to even pretend we are working towards reconciliation. We are also incredibly reliant on fossil fuel production and as a country are moving way too slowly towards sustainability. I'm Canadian but I grew up in Iran. I'm in a weird place because you can't even begin to compare Canada and Iran. When you grow up in Iran. You don't know that you're living in a bubble where everything is controlled. At least I didn't. I didn't know that the words atheism or homosexual existed. I didn't even know those were real things. By far the scariest part is that I think I could have actually lived a relatively happy life there. But there would be this invisible cap on my happiness. When you don't really know what freedom feels like. You don't really have anything to compare it to. I'm not sure if that makes sense. Anyways. So when I first became a Canadian citizen, I had this overwhelming sense of patriotism towards my country. I still do to an extent. Then, when I got exposed to the ugly sides, that is, our treatment of the aboriginal peoples, police brutality, I felt really guilty because I didn't want to believe those things happened here. This country saved me from a lifetime of living inside fog and I really wasn't used to seeing the flaws in it and I kind of hated it. You make the comparison to what's happening in Iran and it all seemed like child's play a little bit. Anyway, I've gotten a lot better at recognizing that you can love your country and still recognize its flaws. I'll always be proud to be Canadian, even if I end up moving somewhere else but I want to build a country that everyone can be proud of and you can't do that unless you recognize its shortcomings. 
Sorry if that didn't make sense lol. Well said. I'm also Canadian and feel the same about loving my country while still pushing it to be better. Especially when it comes to our treatment of indigenous Canadians. I am proud of being Brazilian. Now about the country. No I'm not. The country is full of corruption, criminality, racism. A very big thing when literally half of the duck eyeing population is mixed brown. And don't forget about the shitty economy. Goddamn it I want the empire back. I'm Japanese, but was born and raised in Canada. My connection to Japan isn't super strong but I do consider myself to be from both countries. I'm proud of many things Canada and Japan do, but very unhappy with other things they do, which I think is normal. The biggest disappointment I have for both countries is shared. I wish we were willing to admit that we've done terrible things in the past. For Canada that's the residential schools, and for Japan it's their acts in World War 2. I understand it's embarrassing and not politically beneficial to do, but that's a load of crap. No nation is pure, no nation is free of sinful acts. If you can't stand up and admit you've made a mistake, and vow to never repeat it, then it massively cheapens the weight of your words when you call other countries out for current atrocities, and belittles your own appearance. Edit. Spelling. I mean England ducked everyone over more or less, not proud of it, but I'm proud of the Englishman that I am and I'm proud of our NHS. Can't say I'm proud of our government and its decisions at the moment but hey. I think we're too moody for national pride in England. I like my area but travel more than 20 kilometers away in any direction and it's full of backwards savages, ya yeah, no? British history has a lot to be proud of. We came up with the tech for the industrial revolution which completely changed the world and led to the machine age we live in today. Even just taking the Victorians. They invented and set the standard for our way of life today. Not to mention British culture. We have many famous writers and poets such as Shakespeare. The British legal system with the idea of citizens rights and rule of law etc was a model for much of the world. And not to mention the massive contribution to science British people added to the world. A British person discovered penicillin. For example. Britain has been a world class center of learning and innovation for much of its history. Don't let the present day and legacy of empire. Which isn't a uniquely British problem. Drag down your entire view of British history. I am proud to be a Filipino but not sure about the government. Oh boy. We can talk about the fills all day. There's the beautiful landscapes. Duck in Boracay. To be specific. There's chocolate hills all the way there in Bohol. And don't get me started on the volcanoes. They are the most interesting to me out of the bunch. There's the excellent food. Like our lechon and biko. Our coconuts and our grain. And what we make of them. Buko pandan. Whatever we please. Then the ducking government. The economy. We had so much potential but I think it has been lost to the tyrants. They have stripped us of our respect towards them. And other countries can agree with my statement. We could have been the trading center of the entire world. Combine the stereotypical Filipino hospitality although it may or may not be fake to get a good reputation of some sorts. And our various resources. We could have been the wandering merchants that we always were meant to be. Despite all this. Here we are. Degrading in quality. Not holding up to the standards we have put on ourselves. We lie in the third world country category. Not economically barren. So to speak. But we had so much more coming for us. Our government is in shambles. Our brainwashed minds yet to discover that two more years of the tyrant being in our office would lead. Theoretically. To our downfall. I'm proud of what we accomplished before. I'm more indifferent to our country now. Due to the mistakes which were made. More disappointed in our indifference to our potential. Really. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cast you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.